En quoi tu Tu m'as baissé, Ted. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. En... The court is Reprise now back in session. The floor is once again given to Nunti's defense to continue putting questions to this expert. You may proceed. Elle peut continuer à interroger l'expert. Thank you, Mr. Maître President. Coppe. Merci, Monsieur uh, le Président. Mr. Short, I would like to read Monsieur a few passages from vous lire uh, the book from Steve Heder to you from Cambodian Steve Communism Heder. and the Vietnamese model. Maybe, uh, uh, with your leave, Mr. President, I will be able Monsieur to Président, put uh, the relevant passages uh, on the screen for Mr. Short to read along. À uh, we're speaking passages. about document E3-22. Um, ERN numbers ERN English 0039-3644 until 0039-3675. Un unfortunately, there does not seem to be a French or Khmer translation of uh, this part of the book. So, we have to limit ourselves to the English version. Maybe, with your leave, Mr. President, we could put the relevant passages of the book. President. First, I believe you should ask the expert whether he has seen the document. Court officer, could you deliver the hard copy from the council for the expert witness examination first? Le document Th thank you, Mr. President. I, I believe the, uh, Mr. Short has answered that he isn't sure what he has actually read it. So maybe if we have, he has a look at it again, it will refresh his memory. Peut-il y jeter à nouveau un coup d'œil? Peut-être que cela va lui rafraîchir la mémoire. You recognize it, Mr. Short? La Défense. Est-ce que vous reconnaissez ce document? Could, please, could you repeat your answer? Vous répéter I'm sorry. Votre uh, it is looking more familiar. Réponse. I think I did read it um, after my own book was completed. Chose. Je pense um, l'avoir lu après yes, avoir achevé mon propre I'm livre. Sure. Oui, j'en suis pratiquement certain. Okay. Um, I would like to read a few passages Je vais from both extraits. the foreword by uh, de la préface, Mr. Chandler to this book uh, and some passages from the introduction des de uh, of the book. So, because we don't have much time to go into to, uh, detail, I would like to read to you the following passages. Um, on page Roman 7, À la page um, 7 en chiffre romain. That is, to be more specific, ERN number 0039-3648. Chandler is saying, Voici ce and I quote, Chandler, je cite, in the course of his analysis, dans son analyse, Heather disposes Eder of four myths about Cambodian communism that have been accepted in whole or in part by many other writers. These are that the Communist Party of Kampuchea, CPK, and its predecessors were not communists at all, that they were controlled and led astray by a handful of Cambodian intellectuals who had studied in France, that they owed nothing to foreign models or advice, and finally, that in terms of theory and practice, the CPK was essentially Maoist. Just to, uh, to give you more context, uh, Mr. Short, let me allow me to read some more passages to put it all in, in, in one, 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 one context. Uh, on uh, page Roman 9, ERN 0039-3650, says in the second paragraph, as Heather convincingly demonstrates, French radical thinking was insignificant in the intellectual development of the leaders of the CPK. Uh, 
a little further on that same page about Pol Pot. In the process, he became the protege of Vietnamese cadre and Cambodian communists like Thu Samut, who had been trained by the Vietnamese. On the, ne on the next page, that would be Roman number 10. After 1975, CPK spokesmen repeatedly claimed that the Cambodian Revolution was without president and followed no foreign models. This stance reinforced the nationalist quasi-Utopian utopian aspects of the organization as the CPK called itself and reflected its fondness both for concealment and for what it called independence mastery. However, as Hedder's study makes abundantly clear, at almost every turn in the first 45 years of its history, the CPK and its predecessors, predecessor parties followed Vietnamese models, timetables, and advice. Now, moving on, because this is what Chandler is saying, um, in the introduction in itself by Header, there will be page one of that book, ERN uh, 0039-3664. He says in the middle of that page, it lays the groundwork for understanding the behavior of Cambodian communists as the acting out of a set of political blueprints authored by the Vietnamese communists who at once aspired to be the leaders of the rev of revolution in the region. A little further on that page, it describes how the Vietnamese taught Cambodian communists the general rules of revolution and the specific strategy and tactics for making revolution in the Indo-Chinese context. Let me, otherwise we will lose too much time. Let me summarize the rest. What basically the main argument of Steve Heather is seems to be that DK policy, DK ideology, CPK ideology rather, was in essence completely modeled on the Vietnamese ideology, on the Vietnamese model. Now, having read with me those passages, do you agree passages, with Steve Hedder? Est-ce que vous souscrivez à cette idée de Steve Hedder? No. Réponse: Non. Please elaborate. Question: Pourriez-vous préciser? To take the very first okay. extract, Hedder is completely right. Hedder a tout à fait in, raison. Uh, negating claims or refuting claims that the CPK were not communist. The CPK was communist. They were not led astray with a handful by a handful of intellectuals. They did owe a lot to foreign models and it was not essentially Maoist. All that I agree with. The, the problem, um, it, it comes back to what I said earlier. Uh, Steve Hedder takes the view that the CPK should be seen essentially as a communist party among others. I take the view that uh, the particular form taken by the CPK uh, reflects Khmer culture, uh, its Buddhist uh, antecedents, and that that is not found in any other Communist Party, uh, not even the Burmese Communist Party. Um, so, so we disagree over that, and we disagree over uh, the extent to which the, uh, the CPK took the Vietnamese Party as its model. Uh, but this kind of disagreement is quite na natural and normal among people who uh, spend time studying this. I, I, I agree with you in, in general, um, but I've, I've, I feel I need little, to hear a little more arguments um, from you as an, as an expert um, to dismiss 
afin the arguments, de the well researched arguments, les arguments uh, in fact, par beaucoup de from, recherches, as what my learned friend on the other faits, side, have, uh, somebody who has been called the world's most leading ici, je fais référence um, academic on CPK policy and ideology. mondial de l'idéologie et de la politique du PCK pour reprendre les termes utilisés par la partie adverse. Uh, C'est tout à fait vrai mentored que the Cambodian party, les Vietnamiens uh, ont joué un rôle de mentor pour les Cambodiens et ceux c'était fondamentalement au départ une création vietnamienne. Uh, on peut même dire que c'était entièrement au début une création uh, des Vietnamiens. Uh, 19, et ce, qu'à la fin des années 50 um, ou talked, au début I des années 60. Je pense qu'on a parlé du congrès de 1960 à l'occasion duquel without, uh, le Vietnamese PCK s'est réuni sans observateurs vietnamiens in, 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 in to the et sans que Then les Vietnamiens en aient été informés au préalable. Uh, it, Ensuite, Paul et de le mentionne, il y a eu la visite de Paul Pot à Hanoi en 1965-66, ce qui a été crucial. Was the moment parce que c'est à ce moment-là que Pol Pot really a réellement décidé que les Vietnamiens voulaient contrôler le PCK and, uh, from then on, uh, et à partir de là, la divergence s'est accentuée. Si l'on soutient que la politique du PCK était on essentiellement fondée sur la politique du Parti travailleur vietnamien, il faut alors expliquer pourquoi, après 1975, une série de politiques ont été mises en œuvre au Cambodge, au Cambodge démocratique, et une série très différente de politiques ont été mises en œuvre au Vietnam. En effet, ces deux politiques ont été très différentes. La défense, excusez-moi de vous interrompre, cela pourrait très bien être causé par des facteurs externes. Des from, uh, about Vietnamese hegemony, menaces hegemony, perçues ou réelles d'un um, risque d'hégémonie vietnamienne, the, the of the, of the, of the la rapidité de la know, révolution. In, in, in Vietnam, it took tens Au Vietnam, of, tens of years, il a fallu decades, plusieurs uh, décennies so in China to to achieve, achieve uh, a victory. pour remporter um, la victoire. There might, be, there might be cultural differences, obviously, between China, and Vietnam, and, and Cambodia. But in essence, he is saying CPK was just a communist party, and in theory and ide ideology, it didn't differ from the Vietnamese or possibly even the Chinese. So am I to understand that you don't agree with that observation? I do not agree with that, with that interpretation. Je suis en désaccord avec cette interprétation. Then once again, and, and I'm question. coming back to my, Encore une fois, the, the first question before the last break. Pour revenir à ma what première question was then the pause, crucial difference in theory? Uh, remember, I took you to 16 April 1975. What was the, 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 the crucial difference in theory between Kampuchean ideology, CPK ideology on the one hand, and the Vietnamese ideology, or rather the Chinese, or maybe even the Soviet on the other hand? I, I, I'm still not getting the crucial difference in theory. Au niveau théorique, quelle était cette différence cruciale? The, the, the matter of where theory stops and practice starts is a, is a contentious one. Um, one fundamental difference, whether you call it theoretical or practical, is that the Vietnamese party, which had been in power in the North uh, for, since 1954, and therefore had a very long experience, was based on the working class, the industrial proletariat. Uh, there was no industrial proletariat, at least none recognized as such by the CPK. Uh, therefore, it was based on the peasantry. Now, in theory, in theory and in practice, uh, a party which is based on an alliance of peasants and intellectuals is fundamentally different from a, 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 an orthodox Leninist party based on the working class, uh, uh, such as the Vietnamese Workers' Party, Workers' Party in, in its name. Uh, 
Let, let me again try from another angle. Steve Heather is using the word Question. blueprints, Je reformule. Steve Heather which you disagree le mot, uh, with that particular modèle. use of, of, of that word, that the Vietnamese model was a blueprint Alors, for the CPK model. Are you agree with this word that the model Vietnamese served as a model for the model of the PCK? I would disagree. Uh, a blueprint, uh, je, je yes, in the sense of the early stages of, of the revolution. When I say early stages, the, the, the pre-1973 uh, stage, yes, in, in up to that point, uh, there were quite close parallels. But once you get to the evacuation of the cities, I can only quote Mao's conversation with the Vietnamese leader Le Zuan, where Mao said, we couldn't do that, could you? And Le Zuan said, no, we couldn't. It would have been inconceivable in Vietnam. It was what the CPK did, and it's a pretty major difference. Is it fair to, 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 to conclude and to, to summarize that had you been in a position to read Hedda's book before publication of your book, it wouldn't have changed your view on CPK policy? No, it wouldn't. Uh, and, and you know, to be fair, Stephen Heather and I had long conversations about these sorts of issues. I wasn't aware at the time that he, he, this book was coming out, or if, if I was, I've forgotten. But we talked about it. And if I might just add, I, I think a lot of this difference in interpretation is the fact that Stephen Heather concentrated on Cambodia and Vietnam. And my background, as I say, is of looking at many different cultures and what, and systems and Dans what is specific parcours, to those particular systems, systems, what the differences are, why the Chinese party and the Cambodian party are different. Uh, his strength was in the depth of his lui, knowledge of uh, this particular uh, system, uh, not so much in the comparative study. Now allow me to, to ask you some, some more questions Question. and also in following up Judge Laverne's questions uh, uh, two days ago about um, Mao thought Chinese communist ideology. Uh, in your book, you have been writing about contacts between Pol Pot and, and, and Mao and Pol Pot and others, Zhu Enlai, I believe. Uh, Somewhere in your book, you're, you're, you're quoting the, the excessive praise from Pol Pot about uh, uh, the Cultural Revolution. You uh, mention uh, contacts uh, with très positifs, um, excessivement positif que Pol Pot tenait uh, former widow of Mao. I'm sure you can pronounce her, her name better uh, than, than, than I can. Dans, um, uh, je le nom. Right in that period, second part 60s, early 70s, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, things going on about the Cultural Revolution. And, and, and earlier, of course, we had the Great Leap Forward. Would it be fair to say, or am I now oversimplifying things completely, that maybe the CPK policy was about combining the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution all at once le grand banc en avant uh, and go forward, but still tout en même temps pour taking the inspiration from China when it comes to the Great Leap Forward or the Cultural Revolution. Et son grand banc en avant et sa révolution culturelle. Insofar as the Great Leap Forward is concerned, certainly. This was an inspiration. Uh, it was a model. It was something that they wanted to, to do themselves, but to do better. As regards the Cultural Revolution, no. It was completely antithetical to everything that was done in uh, democratic Kampuchea. I, I don't think any of the uh, DK leaders 
say. I don't think, I don't know what was in their heads. But I've seen nothing to suggest that they wished to emulate the Cultural Revolution or that they understood what it was, which was something quite close to a, to a civil war. Uh, they'd had that in Cambodia. They didn't, certainly didn't want to set one group warring against another for ideological rectitude. Uh, so the Cultural Revolution analogy is a complete red herring. But the Great Leap Forward, yes. Um, and Joe and Lai, uh, when he met Hu Songpan, according to the Chinese documents, uh, said, uh, you, you, you should not go down that road. We did it, and uh, it, it was not something which produced enormous successes. It produced, as you know, 38 million dead and a huge famine. I, I, about the Cultural Revolution, I, I, I do recall that you have been writing about contexts between, for instance, Yang Sari and, and, and people within that limited group, the Gang of Four. Um, in your conversation with Yang Sari, was he able to speak about any possible influence on him or others uh, from the Cultural Revolution? I, I must I must be Réponse honest, I don't recall honnête. having discussed the Cultural Revolution with him. Um, and I know the parallel is often made between uh, what happened in DK and the Cultural Revolution, but with respect, it, it, to me, with everything, I, all that I know, the little that I know about the two, they were totally unconnected. But I'd, I'd still be interested Question. in hearing from you the possible parallels and the differences between Chinese commu communist policy on the one hand and uh, Cambodian communist policy and ideology on the other hand. What were, according to you, the striking parallels and what were the differences? I know you've said something about violence, but rather I'm talking about Mais euh, je parle plutôt de la théorie. There were two, um, three major influences. The Great Leap Forward was one. Um, the work of Lim Biao who, it was a collective Le article, but it was ascribed to Lin Biao uh, about uh, the, the necessity for the countryside to surround the city, both internationally, in other words, the third world is going to dominate the industrialized world and is going to surround it, and within Cambodia, because it is, it is one of the basic principles of guerrilla warfare. You use the countryside uh, to surround the cities and, and you conquer them, and that had been Chinese practice as well. That certainly was was a, a major influence for, for Pol Pot. Um, the, the idea that uh, a, a revolution could be based on the peasantry also was reinforced by uh, Chinese experience. But in China, nonetheless, they, there had been uh, all the way through an insistence on the importance of the industrial proletariat. And Mao argued that actually the peasantry behaved like the petty bourgeoisie, that is, uh, they would commit uh, uncontrollable acts of violence, they were not disciplined, uh, uh, whereas industrial workers, uh, the proletariat, the industrial proletariat, formed a reliable backbone for any party. Now that backbone was absent in the CPK. I'll, I'll move on because, because of time. Let when we look at what happened in practice, what happened in reality as a result of the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, um, you, you would agree with me that, especially if you've read 
Frank D. Cotter's book about the Great Famine and a recent literature on the Cultural Revolution. Et la littérature récente sur la révolution culturelle. The amount of casualties and victims of both the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution are enormous. Um, um, if it's not within the realm of your of your expertise, then please say so. But when you sort of zoom out, it seems unfair and unjust that former Chinese leaders are not on trial, and DK leaders are being held responsible, criminally responsible for what happened. What is, in your opinion, the essence, the essential difference between the way Chinese leaders have been acting in those particular periods in the 50s and 60s and DK leaders? The President. Expert, please uh, hold on. Mr. Prosecutor, you may proceed. I do have to object to that characterization. I, I don't think it's appropriate in the context of questioning for us as counsel to be commenting uh, as to who should or shouldn't be on trial in what country. Uh, I, to the extent that my friend wishes to explore issues around ideology and effects on the CPK, obviously I have no, no problem with that, but I do object to, um, to, to this commentary as part of the questions. I, I think it's inappropriate. I'm, 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 I'm not inviting uh, Mr. Short to, to, you know, say anything about criminal liability of former Chinese leaders, but I, 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 I'm sure Mr. Short understands uh, what is behind the question. Maybe we should give the expert a little leeway on this. Laisser à l'expert la marge de répondre. The president. The president. The objection by the prosecutor to the last question posed by the defense de counsel for Mr. Nunchia is appropriate. This question is irrelevant. The expert is therefore instructed not to respond to the last question. Counsel, you may move on. That's a pity, Mr. President. Um, I'm keen on getting that answer. I think maybe the expert was keen on giving that answer as well. But I, I'll move on, Mr. President. Um, I'll move on, Mr. Short, to more concrete um, events. And more specifically, I would like to draw your attention to a page in your book, page 277. That is, um, Mr. President, ERN num number English 00396485, and French in the book that will be page 357 to 358, and ERN number 00. 39812 until 813. Mr. Mr. Short. The President. Mr. Copé, could you please uh, repeat the ER and number because it was not uh, being followed by the interpreter? I, I apologize, Mr. President. ER and English 00. Uh, la défense, en anglais, 0030, 6, 4, 8, 5, French, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, in the northwest zone uh, on or around April 18. In the middle of that page, you are saying, you are writing that in the course of this fighting, and then I quote literally, about 20 miles out of the city, 
They, these are Lonol soldiers, were ordered to get off and assemble in nearby fields where their arms were bound and they were killed. A little further on that same page, you write about similar massacres occurred throughout the Northwest at Pailin, gem mining town on the Thai border. The Khmer Rouge arrived on April 20. People in, from neighboring villages, one resident, remembered. And almost down at that page, you say at the Samlaut crossroads, 15 miles to the east, they were all killed. So were 80 city officials. Now, before the break, I've been asking you questions about Odong 1974. We're one year later. In your answers to questions, you have given testimony that you are of the opinion that a policy to execute law and soldiers and officials uh, was in place and that everywhere in the country these executions took place. So let me divide that up. What was your source? for you to conclude that in 75 in the Northwest there was still this policy, this DK policy of executing former law and law soldiers and officials in place. What is your basis for that? I'm sorry, I'm going to disappoint you because I have been looking at my notes, as you no doubt have done, and for that passage I can find no reference, which means that uh, I omitted to put in the notes the reference from which it was taken, and I cannot at this distance tell you what that source was. Uh, I'm sure it was a written source, it was not an interview, but what the source was, I, I'm sorry this is an inadequate answer, but it is the truth and it's all I can tell you. I don't remember uh, where, it came, where that particular statement came from. Are you now um, referring to the actual events in the Northwest, or are you now referring in your answer to um, the existing yes or no policy of executing officials and soldiers? I'm responding to the uh, events in the northwest outside Batambong and Pailin at the Samlot Crossroads uh, to which you just referred. I no longer, I'm not able to tell you what the source of that information was because it's, it should be in my notes, but it's not. It's failing on my part. Uh, and I can't recall at this distance what the source was. It, it was, as I say, those descriptions of what happened in those places I'm sure it came from a written source, but what the written source was, I'm afraid I can't tell. Would you be able to say anything about actual orders or instructions coming from the center, so to, so to speak, towards the north? or Northwest Zone to do this? With respect, I think we dealt with this in, in principle earlier. Um, uh, no, I, I, as I said then, uh, I, have, I have seen no document instructing uh, uh, Khmer Rouge forces in the different zones to execute long soldiers, soldiers and high, former high officials. However, it happened. It happened in a, in a very similar way uh, all over uh, Cambodia. Um, and I take that as a prima facie evidence uh, as a, uh, that uh, there was an understanding among all the forces involved that this was what ha had to be done. Um, I, I, 
Was there a written document? Perhaps, but if so, I haven't seen it. Uh, was it uh, ver through verbal instructions given at Central Committee and work meetings or work conferences? Very possibly. Uh, I, I don't know. All I'm able to say is it happened in the same way everywhere, and that in indicates a harmonization of policy throughout the country. Assuming for a moment that you are right, when you're saying that it happened everywhere. Bien, présumant que vous avez raison de dire que cela s'est produit partout. Then, how would you be able to opine or, or, or to give conclusions that Dans ce cas -là, what happened was in fact -vous the result of an implemented policy rather than, de for example, politique, understandable et non between pas, par brackets exemple, uh, actions of revenge from local uh, Khmer Rouge cadres on law no soldiers. I mean, we can agree, I think, that there was a bloody war uh, uh, in the last five years. Um, you have written in your book that law no soldiers were not particularly friendly uh, to Khmer Rouge cadres, uh, cadres once they captured them, they executed them like that, ne pas très how bien les cadres can we rouge, si distinguish arrêtés, between what might very well be faire la acts of revenge from local cadres, uh, from local commanders, and not in fact the result of a nationwide policy? Et non pas le résultat d'une politique à l'échelle nationale. I think we've agreed uh, over the last few days that if, if, if there was one thing which characterized the Khmer Rouge movement, the CPK, it was extremely rigid discipline. Uh, it's very hard to believe in those circumstances that individual commanders without a clear understanding that this was what they were expected to do uh, would have allowed their troops to carry out uh, revenge as thoroughgoing and in uh, as many places as we have seen. There were slight variations. There were places where long old soldiers uh, were not uh, killed but were, were sent for re re-education, where high officials were sent for re-education, but under extremely harsh conditions which very few of them survived. These are the exceptions which prove the rule, but there were, there were exceptions, particularly in the eastern zone. However, uh, allowing for that, which in a sense makes the general picture more credible, because uh, you do have these very small variations, uh, the picture across the country was pretty much uniform. And in a regime that disciplined, an army that disciplined, there is a very strong presumption, at, at the least, that there was an understanding which resulted from a centralized order, instruction, que, uh, um, qui policy. Norme, Sorry to interrupt, we are in 1975 now. What, what is your Question evidence, what are your sources that the things, things that you've been describing happened in the Northwest were also happening in the East or also happening in and around Phnom Penh? Could you give one example of irrefutable evidence, exemple? really strong evidence, that uh, there was this systematic pattern of rounding up long old soldiers and officials and executing them. Une, uh, des et des soldats de I think we, um, we discussed Réponse yesterday the uh, uh, exodus in, uh, I, I would have to look back to the, the, um, the, for the details, but if you remember Hang Tung Hak, the former prime minister and another uh, official uh, were sent back to Beijing where they were executed at the Olympic Stadium, um, uh, and the other officers were uh, marched across the rice paddies and their bludgeoned to death. This was something which was read out from the book. It is an, a, a description um, 
of uh, an eyewitness who was part of that, um, uh, of, of that uh, procession and who saw them being separated. Um, there is a great deal of evidence of that kind. Now, you can say the eyewitnesses made them up, but uh, when there is nothing, uh, when everything appears to be consistent with that and there is no coherent evidence to oppose it, I think a court of law like a historian probably will accept it. I understand what you're saying, I hear what you're Question. saying, but nevertheless, and, and, and excuse me for maybe being repetitive, cela, but si je me répète, rather than just citing one account of one unknown person in your book, aren't you able, or, uh, aren't you able to just really livre? give concrete evidence, concrete indications that this really happened, happened in 1975 as a matter of pattern? There, is, there are different sources of evidence oui, from different, different areas. Sources de preuve now, uh, if you were to give me a week si to vous me go through une all my papers en revue, uh, in storage in Paris, I could probably draw up a list of who testified to what, where. Um, at the moment, en disant, uh, in these circumstances, I can only cite cases like the one I have. Pour l'instant, je ne peux but que citer I, 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 un cas to, um, que, comme je l'ai fait, be disrespectful or, or to je use up your functions. Um, if, if a court hears evidence respect, from one witness, everything is consistent with the evidence of that witness si and nothing contradicts it, it's, it is, as a historian, in the same way as a historian, that opposé, evidence is taken to be believable. Well, that's the judgment I made on the various witnesses uh, and voilà written evidence which I saw, and I drew the conclusion that there was a pattern which presupposed a policy understanding. And just to be absolutely clear on this, the fact that it, in your opinion, was a pattern is solely Question. based Pour vous, on il y avait donc the fact that un various witnesses giving, are giving accounts disant, of those things happening, not a source que les telling you directly, yes, there was a standing order from the center to do this. Fait source indique que l'ordre a été donné au niveau central d'agir de la sorte. I accept, I agree uh, with what you say. Uh, no, I have no evidence, and I think I've said this before, of an order from the Standing Committee, from the Chair, from Paul Pot. I, there is no evidence that I am aware of of any formal written instruction. The, the pattern uh, is to me evidence uh, that there must have been at least a policy understanding conveyed by what means I don't know, but which explains why the policy was implemented in more or less the same way everywhere. Now, Mr. Short, assuming for a moment that you are right and that there was in fact a policy Et effectivement, to round up lone old soldiers and official and ha officials and have them executed. Exécuter les anciens soldats et fonctionnaires de How, although you haven't seen any evidence, would you think Même si vous it would have been communicated? Aucune preuve, I will tell you the reason vous, why I'm asking this. Que cela été you have no knowledge, as Voici I understand it, uh, about question. executions je at a place called Tour Potre. Uh, that's a place somewhere in the northwest zone. Potre, but le nord evidence might suggest that cela dit, certains éléments orders pourraient donner to, do, to do that, to have those people executed, que des ordres could typically be conveyed through public sessions, donnés au cours political education sessions. Now, 
de formation politique. Again, assuming that there was such a policy. Supposons donc and your knowledge of structure, communications, etc. How would such a standing order and instruction be typically communicated to zone commanders or division commanders or what have you? Était-il communiqué aux commandants de zone, de division ou autre? There were two basic forms of communication. One was by, by coded telegram. Um, before 1975, greater use was made of messengers, which continued after 1975, because telegrams, uh, any kind of radio transmission was liable to interception, and secrecy being one of the watchwords of the regime, that was, that was less rare. I'm not familiar with the case, that was more, that, not so common. I'm, I'm not familiar with the case you mentioned, but we actually looked at, at a document, and there are others uh, the other day, which said we, we should not um, discuss before the masses uh, the elimination of counter-revolutionaries. And certainly practice from every account uh, that has been published since is that people were not uh, taken out and publicly executed. In most cases, they would simply disappear. They would go to what was called the forest in the west, which was a killing ground outside the village. And disappearance was a much more effective way of instilling fear and instilling obedience than uh, a public execution. La peur et de à qu execution Am I, is, it, is it fair then to, to, to summarize Question. your answer that en résumé, it's not very likely que vous dites that qu est any communication to have lone old soldiers or officials killed was conveyed to cadres through public or, or semi-public gatherings, is I would have thought that was correct. Before 1975, as we know, there were warnings, uh, Hu Yun broadcasting, saying, uh, if you want to save yourselves, come over to the revolution now, come immediately, don't wait. Um, uh, but after after 1970, uh, April 1975, uh, no, I, I would be surprised, it would be exceptional if that kind of order were conveyed et ce serait any public way. si un tel ordre était communiqué de manière publique, Just quelle qu'elle soit. Allow me to step a little bit outside of this subject. Would, would, and then I'll go back Faisons again. But would the same, in your opinion, à votre avis, be the case for est -ce que cela vaudrait orders or decisions pour les to purge ou décisions cadres? À Is it, procéder à in your opinion, purge parmi very les unlikely À votre avis, that, for instance, Nunchi or Pol Pot would say to a, Pot, exemple, a meeting of cadres X, Y, or Z in zone, in the zone should be smashed? Pour dire que telle ou telle personne devait être liquidée. I would say réponse. extremely unlikely. Je we know of cases where messengers were sent from uh, the standing, standing committee general office to the eastern zone, for example, vers la zone uh, est, par to, uh, to order purges of high-ranking officials. But these were, were messages, these were extremely secret messages. They were not done publicly. Messagers qui opéraient de façon so would it be fair to say that in your opinion, Donc, low level vous, cadres les cadres or mid level cadres de commanders would not be hearing orders to execute somebody in a, in a, in a full political education au cours d'une session d'éducation politique à caractère formel I would Réponse. be surprised if such orders were given étonné about si name we know that Son Sen uh, addressed meetings of, of military cadres where he talked about the necessity to smash, uh, but without naming those to be smashed. Um, and indeed, 
in many cases that was a call for cas, vigilance un appel uh, à la after certain elements had been arrested and when others were suspected, but they weren't for the most part. That those who were to be arrested were never named. That, that is my best interpretation. Thank you. Now, now going back again to uh, the fate of long soldiers and officials. Now, of course, re re realizing fully that you do not know any specifics or details about what might have happened uh, in Pursat province and, and to portray. But there is evidence that might suggest that um, after the final battle of the fortress at Tupo Trey, uh, officials were more or less lured into a big meeting in a provincial house, having a received speeches and being promised Là, that they would get re-educated and even meet uh, the king. And evidence might suggest that they et selon left certaines preuves, il happy se peut que ces gens aient quitté really la maison provinciale heureux en pensant qu'ils allaient réellement rencontrer le roi. C'est une sorte de stratagème visant à attirer into, les into fonctionnaires de la province vers leurs mains. Have you heard or have you seen evidence that might suggest that such plotting, or however you want to call it, occurred in, for instance, in Phnom Penh or in other cities? Pourrait pu être utilisé à Phnom Penh ou dans d'autres villes. It is exactly what happened in Batambang, where uh, the officers were told to put on their dress uniforms and they would be taken to be presented to the king, to Prince Sihanouk in Phnom Penh, and were killed. Uh, Ils ont été tués early on, on on the route, on the way. Rapidement, en cours de route. Batambang is, as you know, Question. in the northwest. Comme vous le savez, Batambang est dans um, le nord-ouest. You haven't been able to present concrete evidence uh, of what happened in Batambang. We just, we just uh, uh, Batambang. heard from you. Do you know if such schemes happened outside of the Northwest Zone? Si ruses ont été utilisées ailleurs que dans la zone nord-ouest? I do not. Um, but no. This, this is not surprising because there was considerable leeway given to the, the, the zones, the zone commanders, uh, in, in how they went about what they were supposed to go about. The objective was fixed, uh, but the means were left at their disposal, which is, which is why you have these differences between the different areas. Now, of course, Mr. Short, you, you know because you, you've written about it. On various passages, you knew who was the, uh, the commander of uh, the Northwest. Uh, if you don't remember, I'll be happy to give the name to you. Your, your microphone. L'expert. Réponse inaudible. Ro Nim. Ro Nim. Ros Nim. Yes. 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 Ros Nim. D'accord. Do you remember what you have written about him? Do you vous remember de speaking to other people about lui? this particular vous character? Vous avoir parlé de lui avec d'autres personnes? I'm afraid I would need to refresh my memory from, je suis désolé, from my book or my notes. Je pense um, que je vais devoir consulter it's, mon it's livre mes notes pour rafraîchir la mémoire. 10, 12 years later. De mémoire comme ça. Would it be fair to say that uh, he is an, if I might, might put it popular, an old school Isaac guy from the 40s who was there from the, from, from the beginning uh, in the 50s and the 60s with the, with, with, um, the Khmer Rouge or the CPK or whoever it was, was called at that time? Ou le PCK ou quelle que soit l'appellation qui existait à l'époque. 
That was true, I think, of, of all the zone leaders, except for Chochet, who became uh, the leader in, of the western zone uh, when that was created. But all the others, uh, Sopum, uh, Kaipok, Ronim, Tamok, um, I'm leaving some out, but they were all former Isarak. Question. Um, you have been, in your book, Dans votre make, livre, I need to, in your book, you have been making uh, a distinction between, on the one hand, une distinction intellectuals, entre part les intellectuals, and on the other hand, et d'autre part, again, old school, une fois de plus, hard, boiled, tough, uh, cadre les from the Isaac movement. Is that correct? Isaac. Yes, exact. Yes. Oui. Would you be able to elaborate on that distinction between those two groups? Préciser cette distinction entre ces deux groupes. Réponse. One of the reasons why uh, Pol Pot was chosen rather than Noam Chia as secretary of the CPK in 1963 after two summits arrest was that he was thought to be capable of bringing these two groups together. It never completely happened and it remained a source of friction right through the DK regime. Uh, I, th I think we said the other day the, 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 there are confessions in which in which uh, arrested leaders speak of, of uh, thatched houses, meaning the Isarak, and brick houses, meaning the returned students from Paris. Uh, it, that was always a source of friction. Ça a toujours été une source um, de friction. I, I do remember Mr. Kyu Sampan uh, saying to me once that uh, the people who were really responsible for all the abominations were the old Isaraks who had become the warlords, uh, the, the zone leaders in the provinces. Would you be able to, to recollect whether Rosnim was such a warlord si who did things by themselves, by himself, not necessarily receiving instructions from whoever. Recevoir des ordres Le President, uh, Mr. Expert, please Monsieur wait to the prosecution. You may proceed. Uh, I have to object to the content of the question because it, it misrepresents uh, the, the previous response. The characterization of Isaraks as people responsible for all the crimes, acting of their own volition and without any instruction. If I understood the expert's response correctly, that was based on a, like, on a statement by Q. Sampan. Uh, it wasn't a conclusion that the expert has given. Um, so I object to it being put to the expert. As a, donc as, as a fact or a conclusion or inference comme that un fait ou comme une conclusion tirée par l'expert. Let me, let me rephrase, um, um, Mr. President. Was there, in your opinion, a difference avis, between y avait -il une différence the actions of entre the Isaac warlords on the one hand and, des seigneurs de guerre Isaac and, and, and ideas and policy maybe from the intellectuals such as Les Nunchia and Kyosampan on the other side. Like part. I, I, I would have made the point and reinforced the point that indeed uh, the statement about um, the, 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 the warlords being responsible for all the problems was Mr. Cusampon's view. Um, I, I would certainly not make it my own. Je ne me um, the, the, sûrement pas. the evidence is that the, the former Isarak leaders Tout obeyed pretty scrupulously, the policy laid down from the center. 
obéissait à ses scrupuleusement aux politiques Il y a des fois où François Bizeau, il n'obéissait pas directement à Pol Pot ou à Anouan Cher. Je pense à François Bizeau. Il raconte qu'après sa libération par Douk, suite aux instructions de Pol Pot, Tarmok qui était sûrement celui des seigneurs de guerre qui s'exprimait dans les termes les plus forts, Tarmok avait dit que le comité central ne savait pas ce qu'il faisait, que Bizeau était un espion américain qui n'aurait jamais fallu remettre en liberté. Or, il a été libéré. C'est un très petit exemple, exemple du centre. C'est un petit exemple. Personne among the Isaraks, among the, the, the former Isaraks who were zone commanders, who was going to disobey what the, the centre had laid down. Now you know, I presume, uh, Mr. Short, what happened Question. to uh, Rosnim in '78. Je suppose que vous savez ce qui est arrivé à Rosnim en 78. My memory is not very precise, but I think I would stand little chance of being wrong in saying he was executed. Do you know why he was executed? Question. Savez-vous pourquoi? You're taking me to a level of detail which is not in the front of my mind. Je n'ai pas autant de détails en mémoire. Have you heard any evidence that might suggest that he was executed because he wasn't listening? Eu connaissance de preuves qu'il aurait été exécuté parce qu'il n'obéissait pas aux ordres ou instructions émanant du centre? If you wish me to offer anything resembling an intelligent response, you will have to allow me to refer to to my book because I do not. I have not learned it by heart. Car je n'ai pas étudié cela par cœur et cela remonte à un certain temps. Maybe if you allow me, I could get back to the question tomorrow and give you some time tonight to have a look at it again. Demain, vous aurez le temps de consulter vos documents. I suppose my 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 question on this topic is that we've been speaking about examples right now of executions in the Northwest Zone in 1975. D'exécution dans la zone nord-ouest en avril 1975. Se peut-il que ces exécutions aient été ordonnées par Rosnim sans qu'il ait dû en recevoir l'autorisation de la part de Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia ou d'autres membres du comité permanent? Le président, Mr. Esper, le procureur, je dois soulever une objection. L'expert, en effet, a dit qu'il n'a pas les documents à sa disposition à temps. Il n'a pas pu prendre grand chose sur tout le portrait et Batin Bal. Je pense qu'il n'a pas pu prendre grand chose sur tout le portrait. À présent, voilà qu'on lui demande s'il se peut que Roslim ait fait ceci ou cela. Cela revient tout simplement à l'inviter à se livrer à de la pure conjecture. The questions of my learned friend were one big invitation to speculate. I might add, but I will rephrase. Autrefois, c'est mon confrère lui-même qui a invité des témoins à spéculer. Mais soit, je vais reformuler. Parlons en général des structures de communication, du rôle des commandants locaux par opposition au centre. Parlons des chefs de guerre, des Israéliens. Now, would it be possible that on the battlefield and shortly after battles, zone commanders decided for themselves to have Lone Hall officials executed, Lone Hall soldiers executed. Do you understand the intent of the question? I understand where you're coming from. À votre question, je vois bien pourquoi je vous la posais. Les chefs de zone n'auraient pas pu agir à l'encontre du consensus politique général ou à l'extérieur de ce consensus fixé par le centre. Il ne s'agit pas d'une armée qui se livre à des actes de banditisme 
uh, which takes matters into its, its, its own head and create, you know, carries out massacres. You're dealing with an army which was um, quite small, not, not an enormous force, uh, which was very rigidly controlled. Um, Yes, there were individual cases of looting. Certes, uh, they were bound to be. Um, but large-scale, systematic killings of particular groups? À no, I, I find it inconceivable non. that that would have happened outside the broad policy consensus which had already been laid down. Well, that is where I lose you, Mr. Expert. Americans killed many Les innocent people in my line in 1968. There wasn't a standing order to do that. À My Lai en We have established Il avait pas dans ce um, sens. the communication in that period of time savons, was very difficult. I, I, I recall difficile. a passage in your book where it sometimes takes a month de votre livre. Vous for one que il message to arrive. Pour message arrive à destination. How can you be so certain in saying si that individual actions, individual decisions by zone commanders were impossible? impossible? When we uh, talked about messages sometimes taking a month, that was in 1971, at the period when the Compton Tom headquarters had just been established. Uh, later on, a proper messenger network with relay posts and everything else was, was set up. It became much better, and they also developed a, 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 a wireless capability. You mentioned My Lai. I, I think it is generally accepted that that was one relatively small, I'm sorry to, to put it that way, but relatively small in terms of the things we're talking about, un événement uh, relativement action by an limité, aberrant, je suis désolé uh, d'employer ces termes, squad. mais assez limité uh, de la part d'un groupe d'Américains fourvoyés. Il ne s'agit pas d'arrêter de... um, et d'exécuter des centaines de personnes uh, in, après les avoir killed, tabassées, bien uh, sûr. Uh, killed, uh, des personnes ont été tuées, des groupes ont été tués sans qu'il y ait eu des atrocités. But what we're sens, talking about here is a pattern des of à uh, killing of a Mais whole ici, group il it's de with respect, uh, not comparable. En toute différence, cela pas comparable. Mr. President, um, La défense. I would oui, like Monsieur to move President, on, although I have a few minutes, I would like to move on to another topic, and maybe it's late minutes, in the day. Vu uh, et que j'ai l'intention de passer à un autre thème, my, my half hour, half je considère que j'ai fait usage de la demi-heure qui m'a été allouée. Preston, thank you, Council, and thank you, Mr. Merci, Expert. Le temps est maintenant appropriate pour aujourd'hui's adjournement. And we will resume tomorrow la morning. La prochaine audience aura lieu demain matin. And for tomorrow, that is Wednesday, the 9th May 2013, we will commence at 9 a.m. And we will continue to hear the testimony of the expert, Mr. Philip Short, who will be questioned by the True Defense team. And Mr. Short, the hearing of your Short, testimony is not yet concluded, pas and you are required to testify again at tomorrow. For that reason, you are invited once again to appear before us to testify before 9 a.m. Court officer, in collaboration with Wisu, could you assist the experts to return to his place of residence and have him return to the courtroom? tomorrow at 9 a.m. I notice the counsel is on her feet and you may proceed. Je constate que l'avocate de la défense s'est levée. Je vous en prie.
Merci, M. le yes, Président. Je ne rallonge pas inutilement l'audience. Je voudrais to, to euh, simplement avoir l'autorisation de la Chambre de donner à euh, M. Short une liste avec Short euh, list les différentes pages listées de son ouvrage en anglais pour qu'il puisse euh, euh, éventuellement les relire avant so demain pour euh, éviter de perdre du temps tomorrow, en audience, qu'il puisse uh, se rafraîchir uh, la mémoire. Uh, Et je voudrais tomorrow, également lui donner... Uh, deux trois documents qui ont été placés like sur l'interface uh, uh, de façon à être également qu'il puisse so se familiariser avec ces documents pour que les choses soient so plus rapides um, um, demain tomorrow, lors de mes, de mes questions. While I question him. President, yes, you may do so. Court officer, uh, could you deliver the hard copy Monsieur documents aller for the expert so that he can review it uh, tonight? Pour les examiner ce soir. Security guards are instructed to take the two accused, Lungi and Kirsten Korn, back to the detention facility and have them return to the courtroom tomorrow prior to 9 a.m. As for Lungi, bring him to the detention, to the holding cell downstairs, which is equipped with the equipment for him to follow the proceeding. The court is now adjourned.